Hey, I'm Kranovic. We're at Wings Over the Rockies second location exploration of flight, where we have a fleet of aircraft that you can come fly for sightseeing flights. And one of them is the Varga 2150A. Now this is Valerie Bloom's favorite aircraft. You're gonna find out why in a second. We'll walk around the aircraft to get a closer look at its design features. And yes, we are gonna get to fly this thing. This is gonna be cool. It's time to go behind the wings. So we're here with the Varga 2150A, but more importantly, we're here with Valerie Bloom, flight training supervisor at Wings Over the Rockies. Now there's a lot of airplanes you get to fly. There's a lot of airplanes out there. We have over 70 aircraft at the museum, along with the fleet here at EOF. And this is your favorite. Why is that? So. First of all, she's very stylish. Um, straight out of 1977, if you couldn't tell by looking at the paint. Factory original, it's just in fantastic shape. Um, but I love the Varga because I do relate to the Varga. I am not a lot of human. The Varga is not a lot of airplane. But more than anything, in addition to just being small, she is mighty. It's a very capable airplane. It has more horsepower than similar two-seat competitors. And I've done a lot with it. I'm just constantly impressed by it. So take us back a bit to the beginning of the Varga. So weirdly enough, the story of the Varga predates the Varga Aircraft Corporation altogether. So this airframe was originally designed by a Douglas test pilot, and he produced them under his name of Morrissey. He only made a couple of Morrisseys in the 1950s before selling the design rights to the Shin Corporation, which built a few more. And then there were several years where they weren't in production, and the design rights were sold to the Varga Aircraft Corporation in Chandler, Arizona. So starting in 1967 is when the Varga, under the Varga name, entered production. But you will find this exact same airframe under three different names. So small and mighty, it's not the biggest, it's not the fastest, it's not the newest, but it might be the coolest. Let's step back and get some context on the design and development that was going on in the 40s and 50s. So in today's video, we are talking about the 2150, but in order to truly understand the history of this airplane, we have to talk a little bit about military aviation as well. We have brought in a special guest, the Beechcraft T-34 Mentor, to give us a little bit more context. The Varga and the T-34, they're different airplanes, but right off the bat, you can start to see some similarities. So what's going on here? Structurally, the Varga took or the Morrissey originally took a lot of notes from military trainer aircraft. Tandem seating, front and back, center joystick instead of a yoke, all trying to emulate military trainers, trying to appeal to the market of veteran aviators. In the big general aviation boom of the 40s and 50s, when everybody wanted an airplane, here comes the Morrissey and later the Varga. So they look so similar, but it's really cool to understand what was actually happening at the time. All these military aviators wanted something familiar to fly, but also something they could afford. So let's go take a closer look about some of the features and also what makes this plane a little bit strange. Can I, can I say that even though it's your favorite plane? Yeah. Absolutely. That's one of the reasons why it is my favorite plane is that it, it is a little odd uh, <laughs> in, in the best way. Let's have a look. Absolutely. So we will start with the power plane. So this engine might look pretty little, and it is, but if you compare this versus what was in competing aircraft of the era, the Varga being a lightweight two-seat airplane is closest related to like the Cessna 150 or the Piper Tomahawk. Both of those airplanes had 100 horsepower engines. This is 150 horsepower. This is a Lycoming 320. And so those extra 50 ponies with an airplane that weighs this little, it climbs very well, it performs very well, and compared to what the big manufacturers like Piper and Cessna were offering for the two-seat market, it was a better airplane. So our theme of small but mighty continues. I can't wait to get up and actually fly this thing. But can we take a look at the cockpit? Of course. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the ways that it emulates military trainers, and we'll look at a few of those oddities we were talking about. Cool. So we have a sliding type canopy. Uh, you can fly it with the canopy open, actually. You have to be pretty slow, but that is an option. 
So with the canopy open, this thing's almost like a convertible and it gives you a sense why it would make such an awesome leisure aircraft. But now that we've got this thing opened up, tell me a bit about what to look out for for some of those strange features you had mentioned. So the way this canopy slides open sideways is really unusual. Um, you don't see it very often and it does make it kind of cool, kind of sporty. But in order to facilitate that, as you can see, it's a, just a piano hinge. All, you know, all along the top of this canopy. Moving into the cockpit, this is a largely original instrument panel. And whereas we might be used to the pilot six pack where we'd have three round dials up here and another three round dials down in here, they wanted to make as many instruments visible from the back seat as possible. So these two migrated up. A largely original instrument panel. As you can see, we don't have any glass displays, no GPS, simple but effective. These airplanes were designed as fun leisure airplanes. They didn't need to be fancy. So to properly feel like a military trainer aircraft, they went with a center joy stick. And you do have a second stick in the back seat, so both positions can fly, although only the front seat has mixture and some of the important engine controls. That's so cool. With the stick in the middle like that, it's almost like a fighter aircraft. But can this thing go upside down? I often get asked if it's an aerobatic airplane because people tell me that it looks like a Yak, which was a Soviet era Russian airplane. So we've established that Varga excelled at simple but effective. One example being is that there are a lot of General Motors parts inside this airplane, including the trim control for this aircraft is the window crank of a Chevy Chevelle. So this airplane's cargo hold makes me feel like I'm a 1920s male pilot. Hiding behind the back seat, we have a cargo pouch. It's literally just a pouch. It's literally a pouch. You know, it, it's small, but I think it would hold enough to get the job done. This thing's cool, I can't wait to fly, but what else do I need to know about it before we take to the skies? So, one of my favorite weird Varga things, which as pilots are familiar, several of our flight instruments require air pressure. So we have a couple of gauges on the outside of the airplane for that, including a static air port. On most airplanes, it's on the side of the nose, maybe the side of the tail, so I was looking everywhere for this thing, and it turns out... It's right there, are you kidding me? After pointing out some of the sillier things, I'll come back around to one of the cool things about the Varga, is that it was a really early adapter of push rods for the flight controls. So instead of cables like you would find in a Cessna, um, you have these push rods for the elevator and the ailerons. The trim, as you saw at the Chevy window crank, is still a cable. It's simple and mostly practical. Now there's only one thing left to do. Can we see how it flies? Of course. We'll move the 234 out of the way and let's hop it. Let's do it. We made it in. I mean, you weren't kidding. This thing is kind of small. But, you know, what do I have to know before we go on the flight? It's a little airplane. We will feel the bump. We shouldn't need any cold air today, but there's little holes in the ceiling that you can open up for some airflow if you need it. And uh, ready to go. Shake and bake. <laughs> Send to the ground, Varga 4603 Victor, wings ramp, information Zulu, request eastbound departure. Run up complete. Clear for takeoff. On zero, clear for takeoff, uh, 4603 Victor. So they don't make the Varga anymore. What's its legacy? So the Varga is kind of a representative of a bygone era where people did want airplanes for the sake of having airplanes. They didn't have to be fancy. Cargo pouch? Why not? Piano hinge? Sure, it works. Sentinel Tower Varga 4603 Victor Aurora Reservoir with Zulu inbound full stop. I love the Varga immensely not only because it is small and mighty like myself, but because it is a little quirky. It is a little weird, and despite those oddities, it is still this fantastic flying airplane. Oh man, no wonder that's your favorite plane. See the last. 
So thank you for flying with me, Cray. One at a time, I hope to make everybody's favorite airplane, the Varga. Uh, on that note, I do have another passenger waiting, so I think I'm going to send you on your merry way and pick it up for another spin. That was so cool getting a close-up look at the Varga 2150. It's weird, but it's cool, and flying it was even more fun. Now, we couldn't cover everything, so leave your questions and comments under the video, and we'll get to as many as we can. And if you subscribe, thank you so much. If you don't subscribe, just subscribe already. And come visit the museum. You can even fly on this thing.